Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to One Piece, episode 988. So, we are continuing on into the infiltration of Onigashima. Uh, Luffy, Law, or not Law, Luffy, Kid, um, Killer, and Zoro are continuing to cause trouble, have gotten into a fight with Apu in them. And it's basically known at this point that they're there at least by a good amount of uh, people. It seems like Kaido and Big Mom and Orochi probably still don't know, but at least some people know. Um, but what they do not know is that there are still other groups sneaking around the back and planning a pincer attack and everything on Kaido. Um, we see that uh, Black Maria's Pleasure Hall has been cleared out, and it's very clear that things are... They have enough notice now with everything that's gone on that things are going to be a little trickier. But we'll just have to see kind of how it goes. Um, we got to see uh, Nami, Carrot, and... Uh, um, why, can I, why do I always mess up her, on her name? Shinobu. We got to see them use their uh, femininity to uh, let get some guards to let them go on and everything. Um, and those same guards insulted uh, Shinobu and earned my wrath. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty good. Been pretty fun. Um, and this is the first thing I'm recording since coming back from my break and everything. So, although this is the second thing of the week that you're seeing and everything, it's the first thing I'm actually recording due to pre-recording schedules and all. Um, so that's fun. Uh, a good show to get back into things on, right? <laughs> After taking a week off. Um, I'm definitely excited to see where this raid continues to go. It, it, it's taking things very slow at the moment. And I'm hoping it does speed up soon, but I understand why it's taking things slow. Because it's clearly going to be building to some big shit. Um, we're probably going to have, like, war-level battles and everything here, so... It, it has that build-up. We're building it up, we're getting ready, preparing for the big drop to happen. Um, and, and there's still... Some characters I really want to see in action, such as the Tobiropo, and I really want to see like the uh, the real debut of Yamato still. So that's still coming at some point. Um, and there's just so much more that can be done. There's so much more that they just really have set up here to work with. So I am genuinely very excited to see what they do going forward. But that being said, uh, we're just going to get straight into this episode, see what we have in store, and hope for the best. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. As after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you at the reaction. And we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in three, two, one, now. So you may notice the thumbnail for uh, this reaction, this episode is uh, page one carrying ulti. And there's a couple reasons why I chose that. Uh, the biggest one is I, even though it's a few days after the episode initially aired, I just, just in case I did not want to spoil anyone on Marco's return. Because uh, a lot of reactors, a lot of people who watch it, don't watch the openings and don't watch the re recaps and everything. Don't look at the titles. And they do this to avoid spoilers. Um, 
And if ever, if people avoided all of that, the, if they avoided the opening, the re recap, they didn't look at the title, they wouldn't know that Marco was going to return. And so I, I wanted to ensure that by also not having my thumbnail show that. Next week, I'll probably have Marco if he's uh, in the episode again. But we'll see as we go into next week. Um, in the meantime, I also chose page one in Ulti because Ulti, like, being carried and being, like, really pleased about being carried like that is super fucking cute. Like, I, I already really like Ulti as a character. I, I think she's really fun. She's hilarious. She's adorable. And, and it's like, I really can't wait to see her in action. Because just everything we've seen of her so far has been fantastic. And, and just, again, just the idea of her wanting to be carried like a princess like that is just like, that's instantly what I thought of. Um... And it's like, there, there's one opening of, of the series. I don't remember which opening it was. It's pre-time skip, I know that for sure. But it shows Sanji carrying Robin in the same way while they're, like, running away from... I want to say it's a dinosaur, but I'm not 100% on that. Um, but he's, like, carrying her in the same way, and I've always kind of referred to that as, like, the princess carry. Like, the idea of, like, a knight carrying a princess away from danger in kind of that way. And so I, I made the joke during the reaction, like going along with like, but you're supposed to carry the princess and everything. And it's like, it, it's, it, I, I feel like, I don't know if this is like a common thing for people to view it that way or not, probably not, but that's how I've always viewed it. So because of that, it's just like, I just wanted to kind of make the joke to just note how cute and everything, how, uh, how how freaking adorable and fun I thought that little moment was, even if it was very minor in the context of the episode. Um. So yeah, yeah, and, and again, because I just like Ulti so much so far, I, I just, I want to include her in the thumbnails. <laughs> Um, it, it's kind of like when uh, Komarasaki Hiyori first came up and everything, and I was including her in a bunch of thumbnails because I just thought she was, and I still think she is, extremely pretty. Like, n it's not even, a, like, a hotness thing or anything. Like, like some, it's not even, like, a simping thing. I just think she's super pretty. Like, actually, like, and I use that word very specifically. Like, whether in her Komurasaki outfit, whether in her, uh, I guess, her Hiyori outfit, her dress-down outfit, um, she's just pretty. That is the best way to describe it. And so it's like, I wanted to use her in thumbnails when it happened, and the same kind of is going on for Ulti right now. Um, it's just that case of it's like, I'm really enjoying the character. I, I think that they look, that their design is really damn good. I want to feature them um, when, when I can and when it feels right to do so. So I'm going to. <laughs> but let's actually talk about this episode. So obviously we got to talk about Marco, Izo, and Cat Viper coming into Wano. Marco's return and everything, like, we kind of figured Marco and Cat Viper were going to come because we had seen them talking in, with each other before and everything. Um, but even, dis even, even so, I feel like his arrival was very understated. Like, it just kind of like, oh, he's here now. Like, there wasn't even any kind of epic music uh, at, at, at first to herald his, his arrival. It's just like, oh, you let's let's get back in with the big mom pirates. They're climbing up the waterfall, and they start talking about King, and Perispero is getting pissy at King and, and everything for knocking them down the waterfall. Uh, then, oh, is that King this guy? No, it's Marco. That that's pretty much how how his arrival was. It's just like, is that King? No, it's Marco. There was no fanfare, no no cool music uh, or anything at first. 
that only started when Marco began fighting with them and eventually knocked them down a waterfall. Um, so it's like, <laughs> it, 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 it really just felt very, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's just, it, it didn't feel like as grand of an entrance as you would expect for someone like Marco, the first division commander of the Whitebeard Pirates. Like, basically the equivalent of Zorro. Or, I guess if you want to count an even bigger crew and everything that's more comparable to the Whitebeards in their prime, uh, it'd be comparable to Rayleigh of the Roger Pirates. Um, he is ba he is the first commander. He he is the second in command to Whitebeard in that crew. Or well, was when Whitebeard was around still. And this was even back in those days, even pre time skip and all. This was the crew of an emperor. Whitebeard was an emperor. So you have to realize it's like yeah, Big Mom's an emperor too. These, uh, her, her family and all, they're the crew of an emperor. Sure. But it's like, Marco kind of had the advantage in, in that little fight there, uh, just because of his abilities and all. Um, so yeah, that was fun. Um, very quick battle, but fun. Um, and we see as they, as they're knocked back down the waterfall... We see that um, coming up the waterfalls, Cat Viper's ship, which Izo is on too, and apparently Izo hasn't seen um, hasn't seen Marco since the war, which is pretty interesting, because that was like in universe a couple years ago. So what has Izo been doing during all this time? Have have the other commanders just been doing their own thing too? I mean, it's a fair bet. But I'm just genuinely wondering, like, they haven't seen each other at all since the war in, in those two years? That seems wild. But as I said in the reaction, I'm, I'm a little more excited to see Izo reunite with Okiku. Because it's been quite a long time since they've seen each other. I I Izo left at the same time as Odin. When Odin went with Whitebeard, and Izo hadn't been seen by Okiku ever since. Like, this was well before, like, they were sent into the future. Because the thing you have to realize is it was at least over a year before. Because it, cause he spent, Odin spent a year traveling with Roger, and, and he had spent... A good amount of time before that, traveling with with Whitebeard. In fact, I think he spent a few years traveling with Whitebeard because he met his wife and had both of his kids while with Whitebeard. And both of them grew up to, like, very young age, mind you. Like, what, three years old, uh, I think Momo was, um, before they returned. Something like that, probably. But they had been with Whitebeard for a few years, so it's Izo and Okigu have not seen each other for quite a long time. Like, no matter how you look at it. Um, and, and then, of course, 20 years passed as well, um, even though for Okiku it was a lot less time because she was just sent into the future. So it's actually been longer for Izo than it has been for Okiku, technically. Um, but either way, I, I really do want to see them reunite. Um, that's a really big wish for me right now. Um, getting to see them actually reconnect and everything. And it's it's still wild to me just how long ago it was that we saw Izo for the first time in Marineford. And, and we didn't even know about Okiku back then. Uh, we knew he was from Wano, but that's about it. <laughs> um, and that was before episode 500, and now we're coming up on nearly episode 1000. 
That was like literally half the series ago. That's wild to think about. Half of the series as of where it's at currently. Um, that's wild to think about that it's been that long since Marineford. Um, but yeah, I, I'm excited for that. We got to have Cat Viper talk a little bit with Dog Storm, and it's about the same as you would expect. <laughs> um, and so yeah, we have our reinforcements arriving, and that's going to be fun. That's going to—I'm wondering how they're going to get involved specifically. Um, meanwhile, Black Maria, instead of choosing to go after Yamato, is staying by Kaido's side, along with Orochi, when Kanjiro arrives. Kanjiro finally makes it to Orochi and Kaido. Hasn't told them about the Akazaya and the others coming and everything. They still don't know. But he has shown off that he has Momonosuke. He explained why he, it, it, he took so long to get there. But he has not told them the big fucking deal yet. <laughs> So that's going to be interesting when that does happen, uh, how they're going to respond to it. Um, and I assume the other Tobiropo are out there just looking for Yamato. Uh, but we also had Big Mom in the Pleasure Hall, apparently. While they were going past the Pleasure Hall, apparently Big Mom entered at some point after Sanji had looked uh, in there. And so everyone had to dive into the water because she was about to look out the window and everything. But Chopper is in the tank, and he's not really able to just dive in the water all willy-nilly. So as Big Mom opens the window, she sees him. And we don't find out what happened with that yet. So that's going to be interesting. Um, it's definitely going to be interesting to see what they do with that. And how Big Mom reacts and everything. I'm curious, for sure, because um, this could really hurt the mission and everything. Um, but yeah, it's like this episode started to get a couple things going forward. It, it definitely uh, progressed some things. It definitely um, brought us... Um, brought us into some more interesting uh, ideas and just future threads for this arc going forward. And so, I'm, I'm again, I'm very much excited to see what they do with all of these. Uh, how Marco's going to have a role to play here. How um, Izo and Cat Viper are. I, I'm interested to see what happens with Big Mom. Interested to see how Orochi and Kaido react to Kanjiro's news. I'm excited to, as always, see more ulti. <laughs> um, I almost feel like there's got to be a reason she and Page One were shown here. Um, I don't know. But uh, also, just last thing to leave off on. Uh, Zoro and Luffy are traveling together, and they break through a wall, end up having to fight some goons, and end up getting separated. Luffy's using this opportunity to practice his Ryuo Haki, and Zoro is using Enma a little more, um, practicing with that. Both of them are taking out these goons without issue, but they're, again, they're separated once more, and that could end up leading to maybe some issues. We'll have to see. Um, there's also this really cute moment of Carrot trying to cheer up Sanji, and it's like, and, and he had to ruin it by going like, no, I will find these women. I won't give up. I will find these women. And it's like, no, no, dude, that's not what Carrot was trying to do. Carrot is trying to tell you to just cheer up and move on with the plan and shit. Uh, Carrot, you're adorable, but yeah, Sanji's beyond help, I think. Um, anywho, anywho. Uh, 
So tell me in the comments below what you thought of this episode of One Piece, and thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See you all next time.